This is a quick video to help you get started with uh, the program's just module, which is creating graph user interface programs. And Python is capable of making graphical user interface programs or GUI programs, but it's not particularly well suited for it. So we'll use another programming language and we'll use another development environment to do that. Um, to make our Python programs, we're using the IDLE, which is called the Python GUI, for, um, for writing code and running it and debugging it. But uh, we're going to use Visual Basic now. Visual Basic is a very popular language, uh, very well suited for making uh, GUI programs. But we're going to need additional software to do that. And you're going to be able to get software from Microsoft.com slash Express. There is a link in the, uh, in the web link section and possibly in the learning module. When you go to web.com slash express, we need to get uh, Visual Basic Express or Visual Studio Express. Those are both free. The difference between Visual Studio and Visual Basic Express is that Visual Studio is also to include some other program languages within one program. So I want to grab that. If you want to play around with some other images, or you can just get Visual Basic Express. But we are going to be doing plus plus um, number two, so you might want to grab Visual Studio. Either way, they're free. Uh, we're going to do build applications for Windows, learn more. This website could change, but you should be able to follow the links and get to where you go. So what you just follow this, download, install it. I have Visual Studio Professional, which you can get for free, by the way, since you're students, um, through a program called DreamSpark. If you do a, a search online for DreamSpark and follow the instructions and register the students, you'll be able to get Visual Studio for free, and it's quite expensive. But you, you definitely don't need it for what you need to do in here. Uh, when you get Visual Basic Express or Visual Studio, you're going to get a new project and these methods might be slightly different based on which uh, problem you're using. But you can also refer to the language companion in the learning module. You want to do basic, and we want to do a Windows form application. Pay attention to where the file save location is here. By default, it's a documents or my documents folder, Visual Studio 2010. You can use 2000 for this if you want to, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then a projects folder. You can give your project a descriptive name if you, if you want. Otherwise, I'll show you uh, how to change that later. I'm just going to click OK. And you see it's creating my project. You can keep an eye down here to see what it's doing. And you want to make sure that you see the Solution Explorer uh, window over here. It might be on this side. Uh, there's a video in the learning module just to orient you to how the program works. So it's quite a complicated program. You can do a lot of different things, and it's got a lot of layout. In. And I've got mine very small here to um, to keep the file size small that I'm, I'm sharing with you. But uh, you can make this very large and have lots of room to do things. But I just want to orient you to the main areas that you're going to need. Uh, the first, as I mentioned, is the Solution Explorer. If you don't see the Ocean Explorer, you want to go to the View menu and find it here. Um, another important window is the Properties window. And I've got mine down here. If you don't see it again, you have to go to View. And it might be in Other Windows. Not the Property Manager. You want the Properties window. So you should be able to find it. Just have to Dig around for it a little bit based on which version it has. Now, the last most important thing you need to find also is the blocks. For me, it's right here. And the video is going to help you as far as navigating and doing using all these features. So I'm going to go through this part kind of quickly. Um, to add a control, you can. These are called controls. The items in your toolbox. You click on them and here, or you can highlight them and drag over here.
to switch back to selecting things, I'm going back to the pointer control. And when a certain control is highlighted on the form, you have access to its properties. I personally prefer this alphabetical listing of properties. It makes it easier for me to find things, but it's up to you. Um, so if you want to change the text that appears in this button, you can write here. I also want you to get in the habit of changing the text property of form so it doesn't say form one of the top of the tacky. You want to make this something that's descriptive. Hitting enter sets the property. Um, And the last area that I want to orient you to is the code window. This is called the design view of the form. So if I were to double click this button, well, let me show you another way to get to the code view. You can get to the code view by clicking on the form and clicking view code. All right, so this is the code uh, for my program. And you see it's pretty much empty right now. Public class one and class, all of your all code has this. Notice I've got another tab up here, form1.vb. That's my code tab, and I still have my design tab I can switch back to. When you double click a control, it automatically creates a event handle. Now, I was holding down the control key. That's the key that I have to use to uh, talk on this virtual classroom doing. So it actually also creates form1.load. I don't want any code in form1.load, so I can delete this end handler. It's not going to hurt anything. This line of code with the private sub and the end sub considered your event handler. So basically is an event-driven program. All the code that you write, unlike Python, the code is only going to happen on a certain event. So any code that I put in here is only going to happen when this button gets clicked. So I was just eating that other event handler that got created accidentally. And you're going to have that happen to you too. When you double click an empty area of the form, see it made event handler again, and I'm going to delete it again. Now you can uh, do all sorts of stuff in here. You just have to read read about the language and the language companion or online to all the different things you can do. But one of the great things about, about Visual Basic is that there's a thing called IntelliSense, which is going to help to write things. When Sense comes up, it's this box here. It gives a description of what you can do and how it works. And because message box is real object, we have access to methods and to fields within our objects. The most common method that is used with the message box class is show, which is makes a message box uh, pop up on the screen. Telesense is also helping me to see which arguments the show method wants. Show wants text as a string, and that goes within parentheses because of method. And the method is just a fancy name for a function that's part of a class. So I'm going to text, and just like in Raptor uh, I'm gonna the, and, and in Python, I'm going to put text inside double quotes. Don't need to put Symbols or any special characters on here. And Visual Basic automatically does your indentation for you. Um, so this is the end of the of the sub procedure. It's a little a little function or method within our our code here. Um, Visual Basic automatically handles the indentation and kind of like your pseudo code from your book. It has the private sub and end sub. Um, it's like the beginning of the function and the end of the function. And so I run this program. You want to run your programs with this little terminal icon up here, which is also, you can also do F5. That's what that's telling you. 
or you can go to the debug, start debugging. Lots of different ways to do things. I usually just do this. So that is enough to get you started. Um, things I want to precaution you on. Uh, never do file, save as. Always just save all. You don't want to do save output as or save selected items. You don't want to mess with any of this stuff in here. You want to hit, get in the habit of hitting this guy to save all anytime you've made a change. And then if you want to um, move this somewhere, you have to go to that folder where it was created. So I mean, if I want to move this, like when, you, when I want you to submit this, Close out of Visual Studio, come into that folder where it was created, probably the documents, Visual Studio 2010 projects folder. Find it, and when to submit, I want you to right click on and do set to compress zip folder. But if you ever to move this, you have to move this entire folder outside of uh, the program. You can copy this and paste it onto a flash drive or do a different file location thing to keep this entire folder. In this is actually inside the projects folder. This is actually called a solution folder. Your solution can have multiple projects in it. You don't have to worry about that right now. Just treat this whole uh, folder as a thing. When you want to open it back up, you can go on this file, which is in the solution folder. The SLN uh, extension, if you see your extensions. Or you can click on this file, which is the project file, which is in the second folder that has the same name. Don't rename any files or folders outside of Visual Studio. You can rename this, this, out, this most outer folder. You can rename this one. Don't rename anything else, because uh, all these files are are interrelated and you can't, you don't want to mess them. There is a way to rename things with Visual Studio, Visual Basic. I'll show you that right now. You can double click on the project file. It's got a VB project extension. Or you can double click on the solution file with SLN extension to bring the program back up. Bring it back up, you might not get the same view that you had for, so you might need to uh, find the Solution Explorer again, double click on Form 1 to bring the form back up. Well, mine's up and everything looks okay. If you really wanted to rename uh, this project or the solution, you would in here. And then all the things would still be interrelated and that would be fine. And really that's... Uh, that's all that I think I need to cover this, but uh, you'll want to watch. There's lots of videos out there. The, the video that I that I give you, a good one to get started, get you oriented. So watch that and uh, zip up our project folder and submit it to me. You can make any projects uh, you want to uh, from the entire chapter or the entire book. Just make them with a graphical user interface. And hopefully you'll see connections to the code. The Visual Basic is not that different from Python. There's for loops, there's while loops, there's if statements, all that stuff. It's just slightly different, but IntelliSense is going to help you out.